but the bottom line is transformational festivals are about looking to celebrate our oneness, celebrate this shift in our consciousness, this change in reality. And so it is the culmination really of our global citizenship education, the new age. It's the culmination of, of the changes that we as a society have been experiencing for so long. There's no real one way to define it except for the fact that it is this celebration of a new way of thinking, a new way of being, a new sense of reality, again, that sense of oneness. When you, when you boil it down, oneness ultimately says this, that man, God, and nature are intrinsically one, that we contain the same elements, that we are of the same essence. And so we place ourselves on the same level as, as the earth or as God, everything encompasses each other. It is all in all, all is one. It is the worldview of, of, uh, of the Eastern worldview, Eastern religions. You can even fit within that uh, overarching definition, things like uh, atheism, uh, especially things like uh, what, what uh, um, Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong did, elevating themselves to the position of a, of a deity in their own mind uh, because there is nothing higher than man. If they were the pinnacle of the temple of man and asserted that self-proclaimed deity. Of course, they were wrong. But the implications are very severe. So it, it really is such a, it's a, such a broad, broad uh, umbrella that everything kind of fits underneath. Of course, the biblical view is the opposite. And that is that God is distinct, separate, completely different, utterly incomparable and unique. He is not creation. He is not nature. He is not us. So, oneness, oneism, monism, global citizenship, education, global unity. Carl Teichrib is one of my just really favorite researchers in a number of ways. But you listen to what he's describing there, and I feel like a question that is still not being asked by so many of the people who hear the research of Tigrib and understand this this theme, this message of of global unity, of globalism, oneness being the spiritual, technological, political theme that just runs throughout all of it. But then, if you stop and look you can actually very easily see that this even filters into the cosmological realm as well. And so when we refuse to question everything coming from the, the mainstream status quo, we, because it's supposedly in the realm of proven science and off limits and we don't want to venture there. But if you look at how it fits into the same message of oneness, it's, it's plain as day. His imagination is so much greater than man's. He's never gonna let us relax, 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 relax. We live in an in-between universe where things change all right, but according to patterns, rules, or as we call them, laws of nature. I'm this guy standing on a planet. Really, I'm just a speck. I'm just a speck compared with a star. The planet is just another speck. To think about all of this, to think about the vast emptiness of space. There's billions and billions of stars, billions and billions of specks. The beauty of a living thing is not the atoms that go into it, but the way those atoms are put together. The cosmos is also within us. We're made of star stuff. We are away of the cosmos. And know itself. Across the sea of space, the stars are other suns. We've traveled this way before. 
and there is much to be learned. We're all connected to each other, biologically, to the Earth, chemically, to the rest of the universe. I find it elevating and exhilarating to discover that we live in a universe which permits the evolution of molecular machines as intricate and subtle as we. I know that the molecules in my body are traceable to phenomena in the cosmos. That makes me want to grab people in the street and say, have you heard this? The beauty of a living thing is not the atoms that go into it, but the way those atoms are put together. The cosmos is also within us. We're made of star stuff. We are away of the cosmos to know itself. There's this tremendous mass of waves all over in space, which is the light bouncing around the room, going from one thing to the other, and it's all really there, really, really there. But you gotta stop and think about it, about the complexity, and really get the pleasure. It's all really there, really, really there. The inconceivable nature of nature. To think about all of this, to think about the vast emptiness of space. There's billions and billions of stars, billions and billions of specks. The beauty of a living thing is not the atoms that go into it, but the way those atoms are put together. The cosmos is also within us. We're made of star stuff. We are a way of a cosmos. And know itself. Across the sea of space, the stars are other suns. We have traveled this way before, and there is much to be learned. The cosmos can know itself. I mean, there you have Carl Sagan preaching the mystic gospel of oneness. That is, that's monism right there, encouched in quote-unquote scientific terms. The same pantheistic Eastern spirituality that a lot of people perceive to be the opposite of what you know the New World Order pushes, when in reality it's exactly what they push. The God of the Bible is distinct from creation, whereas the concept of God that, that the worldly systems, uh, the UN, and all these different global initiative agendas is, is a monistic pantheism. It's a false unity. So, so I think this is one of those great examples that kind of speaks in many different directions at once to Christians and young earth creationists who still object to the idea that the Copernican cosmology and all this and all of its interrelated astrophysics and quantum theory that props it all up. You know, if you're still resisting the idea that that is part of the satanic lie, then indeed I challenge you to look closer and hear the message that they are actually speaking with that whole interrelated scientific paradigm. I mean, if you believe that stars are what they claim they are, that they are these atomic fusion centers that are, sp that are constantly spewing atoms out into the universe, then even in a young Earth creation scenario, those atoms are allegedly accumulating on the Earth. And the Earth is growing, the Earth is evolving, even by some minuscule amount. If you believe what the Copernican cosmology says, then you are made of star stuff. Even over the past few thousand years, there's, a, there's undoubtedly a certain amount of uh, atomic material that has made its way into the, you know, into the ground and into the food chain and into your body. So you are one with the universe. 
whereas the Bible teaches that we are made from the dust of the earth. And when you look to 1 Corinthians 15, it clearly says that earthly bodies and heavenly bodies, where it, and it gives the example of the sun, moon, and stars, that they are intrinsically different. They are not made of the same stuff. Go check it out. But also then, for those people who are not Christians and are still maybe kind of uh, on the outside looking in and, and, you know, looking into these spiritual questions and trying to decide, you know, where to go if you've been looking into the flat earth cosmology and it's kind of opening up all these existential questions. Again, I challenge you to also listen to the the monistic, pantheistic message that is being preached on every level of this society. It's, it's completely contrary to the Bible, and this is just a perfect example. And I think this little song, which by the way, I did not make these little auto-tune numbers. Some people think I did, but there's a whole, there's a whole uh, bunch of them that were made. And that's why I find them so interesting. It's not because they're, it's not because the music is just so amazing, or it's just such a cute little gimmick to do, but these are, these videos are made by people celebrating the the undercurrent, the underlying message of this cosmology, the cosmology that's being pushed by the powers that be, right? And you can clearly see. I mean, it's it's obvious. We are all connected. We're all one. We're one with the cosmos. We're made of star stuff. You you are hearing Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye and Carl Sagan preaching the mysticism, the mystery Babylon religion through science, through quote-unquote science. And hopefully that should make you stop and think and do some more research, look more into what the Bible actually says, take a closer look at what the world is preaching, and uh, don't make assumptions. Ask, ask the hard questions. Look for yourself.